Hi again. Um, I'm going to present a work that has been done by two students of mine during the course that I have taught the previous semester, uh, the parallel distributed course on my department. And uh, these two, two students at my supervision developed a tool that can help a parallel programmer in order uh, to find problems in his code. So someone who uh, has the task of parallelizing uh, code, which means that increase the number of execution flows in order to exploit all the uh, multi-course architectures, he can use this tool, which is online, to help and guide him towards his goal. Well, the presentation uh, is the introduction, related work, our methodology, and uh, a test case of using the tool. So we have uh, the problem uh, that in uh, our time we have multi-core architectures that cannot uh, just simply put the serial code and exploit the performance of it. The programmer has to modify his serial code in order to take advantage of all these cores. This is a very daunting task that uh, a lot of programmers, if you have ever tried to parallelize application, uh, perhaps you have faced the problem of uh, your program crashing or outputting wrong results. And uh, the whole thing uh, is based on the fact that all, everything is concurrent. And this means concurrent accesses to perhaps shared data, to critical data, and this means that we may have collisions, we, we have errors, and so on. And uh, during uh, our, our previous research work, we have uh, identified such problems. And I was uh, trying to find a team, to assemble a team of uh, students to create a tool like this, which I think is very beneficial to every parallel programmer. Uh, this tool actually is a C2C code uh, transformation tool. Uh, actually, it uh, accepts a C code and uh, it uh, inserts in specific places printf statements uh, which uh, print uh, some things like the number of accesses, uh, uh, what thread is uh, reading or writing a specific value, and so on. And when the programmer compiles and executes this code, then he gathers a trace file which can visualize using the GNU plot. This is, in summary, uh, the work. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, trying to parallelize applications, and especially uh, an application that is not known to a programmer is, to a programmer is very difficult. Uh, because sometimes somebody gives us a code as a parallel programmer and asks us to parallelize this. This is very difficult if you don't know the code. So tools for this are required. Uh, of course, there is no uh, uh, magic solution that you put a program, press a button, and it uh, will be automatically parallelized. A lot of uh, manual labor is required for the parallelization. And uh, uh, there are many tools that aid towards the parallelization, uh, like Intel Parallel Studio, Code Analyst, uh, GProf, and O Profiler. But on all these tools, we were not able to locate easily or freely as open source a tool to instrument a C code and perform a, a source code to C to C transformation by inserting printf statements with appropriate counter values. And all this data, when it will be executed, will be gathered to a, a trace file, output file and visualized with uh, plotting tools. In our case, we use the GNU plot. So here, first of all, this is an online tool because uh, uh, this uh, 
live in the uh, uh, age of, of uh, Internet of Things, we put everything on the cloud, on the Internet, and it's much easier for somebody to use uh, a tool by just visiting a web page, putting his uh, parameters, and just press the submit button. Um, like the compiler that we saw in the previous in a previous presentation, the uh, from the, the high-level synthesis of uh, Professor Dosis. All th these tools are put on the cloud in order to ease the, uh, a designer to, to use them. There is, of course, related work for transformations and for tools that help towards parallelization, but uh, a tools like our tool is not, we were not able to locate uh, on the literature. And um, in contrast to all the previous authors, our tool is a generic code transformation. You uh, insert an ANSI C uh, code, C code, and uh, you get an, an ANSI C code that can be compiled. Uh, for the time being, we, our tool only accepts one C file at a time. So if our application has a number of C files, the programmer has to uh, manually upload the, if you want a full application profile, all the files, or otherwise uh, he just uploads the, the C file that wants a trace file uh, to be extracted using instrumentation. The methodology is that uh, our tool accepts a C file and it transforms it. It outputs a C file which is uh, validated to be correct, it can be compiled without any warnings. And uh, this uh, C file bears uh, printf statements under every memory access. Memory access, uh, we mean arrays, actually. So whenever there is an access to an array, our tool inserts proper printf statements. Of course, if we target OpenMP, for example, our tool will also insert proper pragma OMP critical uh, directives using the OpenMP framework. Or if you are using OpenMPI, another parallel framework, we will put the correct uh, uh, critical block of uh, MPI. So you can see that our tool supports MPI and OpenMP for the time being, but work in progress is for also CUDA, which is not yet supported. The output is visualized using GNUplot, and I'm going to show you uh, at the end of my presentation an example of how this helped us parallelize uh, a popular multimedia application. There were many problems uh, during the C2C transformation. For example, how to recognize that something is uh, a, a C command or a function, a procedure call, uh, variables, and so on. Also, the comments, detecting and parsing code with comments was a problem because uh, our derived C source bears the same comments as the original code. Uh, some people have uh, eliminated the comments. You, you can use a regular expression, for example, to just uh, delete whatever is a comment. But uh, the resulting C file uh, will be, of course, instrumented, but it will not bear all the useful comments, useful for the developer, for the programmer. And so we opt for the other solution, uh, to keep the comments and, of course, uh, instrument the file correctly. So this was a very difficult uh, task in order how to keep the comments, uh, because comments can be multi-lined. Comments can carry also uh, things like procedure calls, functions, arrays, and uh, how to handle all this. Uh, the tool also recognizes local, global variables and uh, can accept very bad structure code. The tool uh, actually uh, has a pre-processing uh, uh, sub-tool 
which uh, my students have called pretreatment, and uh, the instrument data. The pretreatment uh, fixes the badly structured code. By uh, fixes, uh, we mean the, the insertion of uh, uh, break lines whenever it is required, and with braces, because some uh, people do not put braces at all, uh, which uh, makes difficult the parsing of the code. For example, uh, here we can see uh, parts of the code, uh, the original code and the output of uh, the code. Uh, braces are put at the correct places uh, here. For example, the brace is put uh, uh, as soon as the if statement completes and not on another line. On the original code it was another line and this caused some problems. We can see also the problem with the comments here. Uh, some people, this is not, I don't write like this, but some people try to write code inside the if statement. So this is an if statement and bears comments inside this and uh, uh, bears comments also outside this. We had to fix this. Our pre processing tool fixes this by putting the brace, the bracket is at the correct position. So uh, the comments are ignored, they are not instrumentated at all, but they are not removed, are kept in order uh, to have an output source file that has the same structure and same uh, comments. The tool is written in Python. Uh, because Python is highly portable, it can be executed in, in every operating system, in, even in the Android phones, for example. Uh, and uh, also because it can be used in fast uh, prototyping some applications, uh, but has the drawback of uh, because it's a, um, a language that's interpreted during the execution, it has. Uh, some uh, time issues, but in our case, uh, the instrumentation is done under one second, as we can see from uh, uh, for some multimedia kernels that we instrumented. So uh, the tool is in Python, but of course the uh, the designer is not uh, uh, does not use the tool directly because it can be used via a web page. He can uh, visit the web page and upload the C file and download another uh, instrumented C file. The tool parses many um, uh, many semantics of the all the semantics of the ANSI. Uh, it recognizes a lot of uh, uh, bad structure that is accepted for by the compilers, but is not uh, uh, good for the instrumentor tool and uh, it has been verified to work with many C codes and many peculiar C codes. The tool uh, is uh, almost uh, 600 lines to 1000 lines. Uh, it accepts structured and not, not structured codes and uh, the co completed instrumented C file bears some printf statements which I'm going to show you uh, after some slides. Uh, also arrays, we all know that uh, in C arrays uh, are put in sequential positions in memory. So, uh, for example, if somewhere it's a, an access to a two-dimensional array x, y, then the printf will not print just x and just y, will print the combination a times x, it's the, the dimension of uh, the the array a times x plus b. 
So in the tool, we have, uh, let's say, a unified memory space. We don't because a memory is uh, actually one dimensional. Whatever uh, dimensions we may use in our C code, we just have one dimension in memory. And uh, it's very important for the programmer who wants to parallelize uh, to use a common unified memory space in order to locate collisions with uh, other threads. Because usually, uh, when you parallelize a code, you just you don't write x, y to dimension. You write, for example, uh, more complex expressions that bear also the thread ID, for example, and uh, the workload of the specific thread. So uh, it's a bit complicated, the expression, and if we put it in a common unified memory space, we can easily find that if one thread, for example, tries to, to write uh, address uh, 03, this is a relative uh, index in our example, 03, and another thread tries to write 03, at the same time, means that we have a collision if, we, if it's not protected by critical clause. So this will help the designer, the programmer, to understand that two threads are trying to write the same memory position, which is an error, without proper protection. Uh, for this reason, everything is uh, translated by the tool automatically to the full unified memory space. And uh, here we can see a, a, a printf that is inserted into the C code. For example, here uh, we have the, the array, the thread ID. You can see here the thread ID. So the array is initialized. Initialized, it, it means that for the first time we write something to this array. And how this can help us? For example, if we try to read from a one thread, and the array has not been initialized yet, so this means that we, we, our thread read junk. So nothing has been in there, but somebody has read it. So we, we, this helps us. The array is initialized. The name of the array, how is it defined? The index, the thread of the OpenMP, if we use OpenMP, if we use OpenMPI, we have uh, the proper function call. We don't have OMP get thread num if we have OpenMPI, for example. And uh, we have other counters, like um, a global counter for all array accesses. The, this counter is a global counter for every uh, of all array accesses, which will help us uh, perform uh, create a graph that on the horizontal axis uh, we think this like uh, we use this as the time uh, which increases. For example, the first access to from whatever thread will get uh, the index zero. The second access from whatever thread will get the index one. So we uh, using the execution, all the uh, threads are all the accesses are. Uh, transformed from parallel to sequential in order to visualize the memory access pattern. And uh, of course we have another counter for the specific array. So uh, our tool is, uh, uh, has an input, a C single threaded code, a serial code, a serial C code, and uh, we can define either to use OpenMPI or OpenMP. And it outputs the same code with the same comments with a better structure uh, and, uh, of course, with printf statements. I'm going to uh, show an example of how this helps us as a tool and we'll close the presentation. The example goes on the QSTPCM tool, uh, the QSTPCM multimedia algorithm. It's a compression algorithm using motion vectors. So, uh, when uh, we parallelized initially the QSDPCM, there was a decreasing in the quality which was denoted by signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, at two video streams. The serial code had a much better SNR than the parallel version, which means this is an alarm that something went wrong. Uh, 
so we wanted a tool to help us locate what was wrong on the code. Uh, and uh, we used a tool to, th this is a, a sample of uh, when we run the tool with the instrumentation, which for example here shows that we have a read on this array uh, and, this, uh, the, and the, all the, the indexes, memory address and so on. Here we have a, a W write or if we had an I, it's the initialization of the array. And uh, so this gathered a large output a large trace file of all the accesses. Uh, if uh, I recall correctly, it's over 500 megabytes, this trace file, for processing uh, 10 frames, I think. So it was a big file, but uh, this helped us using GNU plot. Um, uh, I will show you on the, uh, the next slide. I'm so, um, this helps us to find the problem. So this is the web page of the tool. You can uh, upload the C file and you can download another uh, uh, instrumented file. It's uh, uh, simple to use. And this is a problem. Uh, this, is, this was produced by GNUplot using the, some uh, GNU scripts that are on the page. So somebody executes this on his machine. He has the trace file and then uses the GNU plot scripts that are provided by the web page to, pro to print graphs like this. So this graph shows uh, the green color is right and the red color is read. So this we can see here that we have this is red uh, on uh, address 10. 100,000, uh, 100, we have first a read and then we have a write, uh, which means that we read something that it has not been initialized. So this is a problem of read before write. Uh, and with the GNU plot, we were able to visualize and find out that this thread, this uh, uh, this part is being done by a thread. You can see a number of threads here. This uh, thread has only performed one iteration. So this green uh, circle, actually it's uh, an area of accesses. Uh, so this uh, uh, thread has much lower work to do than all the other threads. All the other threads are using uh, three or four parts of the code to to perform computation right, but this thread performs, it's not balanced, performs only very little work, so he moves on and uh, tries to complete the next uh, steps, which is an error. And uh, in order to solve this, we had to put a barrier, a barrier uh, for this thread, actually for all the threads, all the, a barrier after the, this phase, so all the threads were waiting and uh, all the things were written first, and when everything was written, the reading phase of the, of the produced uh, elements uh, was performed. So, um, the, the future work is to add CUDA functionality, to use make files and many C files, because now a single file is uploaded, and perhaps we would like to put a make file with many C files as a zip file to the web page. We are thinking perhaps to allow execution, but uh, because it's a security concern to, to allow to uh, combine and execute user submitted codes, uh, we are very reluctant to do this. And for this reason, we only provide the C code for the user to compile it. And uh, uh, this is a tool, I think we think it's a very important tool because at least if you don't know your code and you have some strange issues, you can visualize the accesses with this open source tool uh, and uh, you can find your problem. This is my presentation, thank you very much.